route. So many people have missed certain seasons. I'll give you an instance. There are people who God deliberately brought close to others within a particular season and they did not discern why they were there. The man will keep asking them, can I help you? And say, no, no worry. Little did they know the man had only two years and he will relocate somewhere. And he, there were Kairos moments. Maybe God granted you access to someone in government. It was by God's, God's grace. And the man was benevolent. God gave you unusual access to his ears, his heart, and his hands. But because you could not discern seasons. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place, but I knew not. Do you know? Because Jacob did not discern the season in Genesis 28. You know his punishment for that? 20 years. Jacob paid the price. 20 years, two wives, and six extra years after 20 years jacob said i need to leave and in chapter 32 when god was coming to him again he said this time around he held him and said i will not let you go i am already this this long behind schedule unless you bless me i will not let you go if my time with you will be this night I will utilize the time and gain back 20 years i'm going to be showing you how to redeem time because there is a technology that has been given to the believers that when we engage it we are able to redeem and cover time hallelujah it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that the bible says for we know that all things all things can work together so don't say i gave my life to christ at 40 i mean the time i'm already halfway gone don't worry there is something you can do with god he designed a system in his economy where your one year can be what your 10 years would have been do you believe this in the name of jesus christ how do you prepare for this defining moments these opportune seasons you prepare for kairos by maximizing chronos that means every day the passage of time is the raw material you use in preparing for these defining moments you do not waste every day and waste every time and expect to just stumble into opportune times let me give you an instance let's assume for instance that a young music minister is trusting god for visibility that god would announce the person it is not the day the opportunity comes that he prepares are we together the opportunity the time he's looking for is kairos but the his performance during the kairos moment will depend on what happens in chronos david prepared for the palace not in the palace david took advantage of his chronos are we together now he learned how to sling he killed the lion he killed the bear it is interesting that nobody was there to record and capture it however the justice system of god preserved that that he was still using his chronos properly one time hmm, i like how god announces men the bible says that the father told him listen go and feed your brothers and he only took food and heard a beast roaring and he said what is the meaning of this they said this man goliath of god six fingers six toes young man go back home immediately he said what shall be done what shall be done to the man who takes this guy down and they said all kinds of things and he said listen I'm able to do this. He said, listen, don't bring shame on our family. We are warriors. And he said, listen, don't disrespect me for wanting to take advantage of my Kairos. Let me defend my preparation. I was in the wilderness. I was in the wilderness when the lion came, when the bear came. I tore it. And Saul looked at him and said, no, there's something. This man. This is not, he has prepared for the Kairos moment. And when he stood before Goliath, Goliath said, am I a dog? Israel, this is what you are bringing? And David said, listen, you come to me with your spears and with your bows, but I come to you in a name. I maximize my moments of preparation. 
I will bring you down and use your own sword, take off your head and give it to the birds. And with one sling, that is mastery. He didn't, he didn't throw, the Bible does not give us information that he kept doing trial and error. He had done that in the wilderness. God is speaking to someone already. Listen, waiting for the day God will announce you is the recipe for remaining a mediocre forever. <clears throat> you prepare in prayer. God has told you he's sending you to the nations. The secret is not to start looking for opportunities. Sing my song, invite me. No, that's not how it works. Where nobody sees you is your greatest stage. The real stage is not where people see you. It's where you are alone. And you are praying, you are fasting, you are preparing. That is chronos being maximized. Are we together? According to the law of times and seasons, I guarantee you. Remember, the Bible says for everything there is a season. That means your season is there. John remained in the wilderness. He was not wasting his time. He was eating locusts and wild honey, preparing himself, finding out the sign to identify Jesus. The Bible says until his season of appearing when that season came with precision when he saw Jesus he said behold the lamb I have prepared seeing you I know you are the one there are many of us we do not even know how the doors were to enter look like because we have been wasting the seasons of preparation either in jealousy or competition and all of that rather than preparing for glorious moments isn't it amazing ladies and gentlemen that the captain of our salvation jesus himself he used 30 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years if you looked at jesus you would call you would think that jesus had delay in purpose how do you prepare for 30 years what is so special about your assignment 30 years and then after 30 years from age 12 in fact to age 30 theologically speaking there is still a debate as to what jesus was doing because they were the silent days of jesus 18 years we do not hear about jesus again what was he doing where did he go the last thing we know about him is that he was in the temple listening to the doctors and asking intelligent questions at age 30 we see this young man coming to be baptized of john and john saw him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe and he said suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he baptized john and the heavens were open he was full of the spirit and he began his ministry within a short time the bible says his fame spread abroad because the level of power and grace and wisdom when he gathered the people and spoke they said we've not had this not in this fashion who is this man where did he come from they gave him according to the synoptic account of Luke in Luke chapter 4 they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me he hath anointed me he read all of these things they were not impartations he used his chronos for someone already the spirit of God is speaking see if you do not perform well and you abort these defining moments it is because you wasted every day that means every day is counting for that day every day counting towards that day every day man of god your every day the time with god the time with prayer the two two hours the one one hour of worship counting building up for that moment of your season of appearing ask anybody today that god has helped and god has lifted they will tell you they can trace to moments 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 of pain moments of labor without reward are we together now moments they knew for most people listen listen for most people they saw long ago where god was taking them to do you know sincerely some of these days that god has brought us today we saw them long ago but we knew we we're not just going to jump into these days so just wishing and saying i have a dream <clears throat> when you have a dream you wake up and then you begin to walk with the holy spirit line upon line precept upon precept 
for some of us your service in this house is your maximizing chronos because a day will come god will send you like an arrow to some nation in the world and you may be pioneering a mighty revival but let me tell you if you are a revivalist your first commission will not be revival you already know you are in error when the, your first assignment becomes what you will be doing for the rest of your life that's not how god works with people if you are paul he will start with you in a certain way are we together now that means if you think god has called you to be an apostle and you get up and your very first assignment in life is apostolic ministry you are in error that's not how god leaves people god can call you to be a worshiper and your first assignment is to sweep the church how does sweeping the church have to, what does it have to do with worship ask Stephen what attending tending to the welfare department had to do with him rising to be a very mighty man God will give you instructions he's using he's preparing you there are some of you because of the nature of the assignment God has given you he will not allow you stay with your parents he will put you with a strict parent somewhere and for 10 years you will not talk what god how what is all this i have parents this man is too harsh chronos mm -mm. god is preparing you for that time because the kind of burden you will be carrying huh? you are going to be leading a stiff-necked people so it's important for you to be used to pain and controversy to build stamina and stature so god will leave you listen i'm speaking to you prophetically hallelujah yes Apostle, I know that God is calling me to be a great kingdom financier. Your first assignment will be to empty everything you get for that one year. He said, no, I resist this spirit. God does not, God cannot speak like that. You have already failed the test. Listen, I submit to you. We live in a world where people do not understand the laws of times and seasons. Instead of waiting and wishing for that day, there is already an assurance from scripture that your that day will come wishing for it does not make you step into it it is maximizing your chronos that means preparing for that evangelistic ministry that apostolic ministry that ministry of prophetic psalmistry it does not start with invitations to go from church to church it starts with your relationship for every time you open your bible for every time you pray for every time you come to church and sit quietly and they say listen join a department you are the one who cleans the pulpit while you are cleaning the pulpit there is a record in heaven your chronos is being maximized one day they would look at you and say listen you are part of the welfare um, department okay just lead us in a 10 minutes prayer uh-huh 10 minutes prayer and you say let's all pray let's hold our hands and give jesus praise and that 10 minutes becomes one hour they will start calling you pastor it's just that you're a pastor that can cook you see how you are graduating now 10 minutes prayer one day when they are looking for people to do a little five 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 minutes prayer the spirit of god because he supervises these seasons he will lead somebody to say that gentleman please let him come up and now you have an opportunity and you see when god wants to accelerate your life he will wait until the day your destiny helpers are before you and then that one opportunity <laughs> hallelujah you must understand those who excel in life are people who they live as if there is an assessment of them every day and it is true there is an assessment every day it's only that your grading will not be that day it will be a cumulative grading so every day you find someone who is doing well already praying and fasting and you are wondering what are you praying for again what are you studying for again has God not lifted you it is the preparation every day maximizing chronos that gives you an opportunity jesus did not die every day listen carefully but he prepared for his death from the time he was born it took him one day to die but it took him a long time to prepare for that one day he kept saying he destroyed this temple and i will build it he would be alone and he would go to pray what was he praying for 
then he went to get Simon. Listen, with all the preparation of Jesus, he almost aborted redemption. Father, if it's possible, take this cup off me. You're Jesus. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, please listen. It said, your strength is small. God is speaking to me to encourage someone right now your appetite for visibility is what may destroy the seasons coming you need to reduce this this insistence to be known and prepare you announce yourself by being faithful in your everyday your faithfulness during your chronos seasons is what prepares you for that kairos moment you don't have to pray for it to come it's been programmed thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the kairos moment has come hallelujah you prepare in prayer you prepare in fasting you prepare by rising to a level of value and capacity that the moment your season comes is with gallancy and honor that you step into that season. Never to come out in shame again. But for many people you see, they think every day is Kairos. And so they can choose to waste every day not knowing that when these seasons go, it takes a long time. A long time. Anybody who did not farm this year is almost over. In fact, it's over. You have to be patient for a few months while you are doing that you go and get your seeds you get your fertilizer you get everything preparing for that moment because for sure as far as the, there is day and night rainy season will come again is that true your pastor he shared his story many times when he was with pastor esco and all the the, the events that happened preparing for those moments you see there is nobody who comes out of nowhere let me tell you the truth all that talk is nonsense there is nobody just because you were not in the wilderness does not mean the person was not there while you are killing the lion and the bear nobody sees you there's no audience to clap for you but the all-seeing eye of god who controls times you've got times and seasons in your hands